Dziękuję tutaj dr Mary Roli Martina Sardama, She worked here. Uh, she did her PhD in 2015 in, at the UNAM University in Mexico City. Then she went to Spain for a couple of years of her postdoctoral research. And then she was here under supervision of Professor Bożena Czernen. She was a postdoc in her group. And now, since a couple of years, she has a permanent uh, faculty position at Astronomy Department of the Chile. Universidad de Concepción. So welcome, Mary Lori will tell us today about UV evolution sequence for active galactic program. So thank you very much for the introduction. I am so happy to be here again. And I'm happy to see many known places and also a lot of new places, maybe. So uh, as Agnieszka said, I am Mary Lori Martinez Sardama. I was here some years ago doing a postdoc with Bushena, and today I'm working in the Universidad de Concepción. We are in the south of the country, more of here. This is the Chilean map, and we are here. Yeah, so uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, the evolution of a uh, active galactic play. But first, I would like to give like some kind of context about what we are talking about. So, uh, you know that some years ago, the James Webb Telescope, the new uh, telescope type with new instrumentation, is now uh, operating. And uh, the James Webb Telescope can give us this kind of image. This is a uh, part of the sky. And here we can see uh, these uh, cluster of galaxies. We can recognize that there are two many kind of galaxies. So for example, in this region, well, we can see that the brightest objects are basically a star that we can see in the field. But here we can recognize that mostly all of these objects that are here are basically galaxies. And um, if we want to really make any kind of division or any kind of how we can divide the galaxies by the properties, one of the things that we can do is like, for example, is that to recognize that all of them have different morphological features. So, for example, some of them look like really uh, this kind of spiral arms. Other ones look like a really bright part in the center, and also they have a structure of a disc. Other ones look like something like a bright uh, nucleus and some nebulae around. So, this is basically a description based on the cosmology. So, in the past, uh, the astronomers uh, were using this morphology description and they divide the uh, galaxies that show these arms and also these like the spiral galaxies here that they are like in the uh, magenta squares also in the yellow one are the lenticular galaxies so it means like a bright uh, nucleus and also a, a structure disk that can be recognized easily and the other one are the elliptical galaxies that looks like a, a bright a nucleus and also diffuse, diffuse material around. Yeah, so. So, excuse me, this is yeah. not completely subjective by like human, but do we have any morphological parameters that we can measure and classify galaxies? Yes, yes, there are morphological parameters. Like yes. ratio of the bar to. Yes, okay, yes, so there are that kind of so things. Detached from uh, yes, okay. yes. For example, here, now there are like uh, automatic techniques that can divide, for example, the spiral galaxies. Here, for example, this galaxy, the arms are like more free uh, compared to this one that are like more closer. So there is a division between them, and now there are automatic techniques that can do this kind of separation. But at the beginning, everything was not right. Uh, since since Seagulls divide uh, the galaxy, isn't it the same as? Spiral, but just look uh, seen under the different names. Yeah, it is other point. We can see some galaxies that are different, yeah. and other are uh, are in age. So here, for example, we can see that like, this one more or less is like kind of the spiral, but is in this position compared to this one that is completely in the front. So also there is an inclination there that we have to consider. Well, but other possibility to separate the different kind of galaxies that we are observing is with the spectroscopy. So basically, we want to take the spectrum and want, we want to see the elementality or the chemical elements in the spectrum that we are observing. So here I am showing two kind of galaxies, an elliptical galaxy and a lenticular galaxy. This is the image. So you will see this one looks like this is a galaxy, although it is not like 
really so fancy like the spiral ones. And the spectrum here, you will see that has this kind of form. Of form. So basically here we can see that this uh, continuum of the main continuum are here is coming from the stellar is to the host galaxy, the surrounding the stars that are in the galaxy. And we can observe also a lot of absorption features that basically are produced by the stellar component. In the case of the lenticular galaxy, we can see a similar spectrum. Again, we have this continuum that it can be described by different uh, black body uh, spectrum from the different stars and also the absorption features. But there are some kind of stars that, uh, sorry, the, the other kind of galaxy, this one, for example, that when we take the uh, spectrum, we can see a completely different situation. We cannot see the black body continuum. We see a continuum that can be described as a power law, and we cannot see the absorption feature. In some of them, yes, but uh, for this uh, case, no. Uh, the absorption features of the galaxy, for example, are here, are here, are here. Here are the absorption features that are here in this region, and really we cannot see any contribution of the host galaxy. So this galaxy has a different behavior because it has a different physics decay. Here the continuum is produced by an accretion process around a supermassive black hole. And this supermassive black hole is more luminous than the complete host galaxy that we have. So everything that we are seeing here is occurring at the center of the galaxy. So that's why these objects are known as active galactic, not they active because it's active because the aggression disk is accreting a lot of material compared with the other galaxies. So uh, here in this spectrum, we are observing the accretion continuum and we are observing also the emission line. So it's completely different, but uh, uh, it's still a galaxy. Well, uh, so these uh, objects are called active galactic nuclei and are galaxies, mm -hmm. and the nucleus is happening something different than the rest of the galaxy. They have a uh, high luminosity, and uh, this luminosity is basically powered by an accretion process surrounding a supermassive black hole. This is our black hole, and this is our accretion disk. Um, the AGM structure includes the supermassive black hole, of course, the accretion disk. And also surrounding the supermassive black hole, there are a set of clouds. And depending on the distance of the cloud, is going to, to be described. So, for example, the clouds that are, so, that are more closer to the continuum source are called the broken region. And in a spectrum, we can see like this. So, it's like a pro profile, almost like a Gaussian, we can say for this case. But if the, if the clouds are really so, no, so close or they are and so more distance to the nuclear, they will show a narrow profile. This is only like linear, linear motion. And these are the emission lines that we are observing in this part of the, of the spectrum. So um, we, we, we can also have a, 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 a dusty torus that is here. And in some cases, we can see the strong jets. Um, yeah. and, there are some issues with the Wi-Fi. Yes, I don't know. Oh. Well, okay. So, <laughs> all the different components in the AGM are contributing basically in all the profile range of the spectrum. So, if we observe an, uh, an AGM in a gamma uh, X-ray, we will find something. If we observe in the radio, we will find something. Optics are in. So basically, um, this is the uh, spectral energy distribution of the AGM, and all these components uh, um, contribute in some way to this uh, to this part. So that's why uh, studying AGM is quite complicated because they have a lot of components, and we don't know yet if these components are linked between them. Apparently, they are, but there is no still a clear theory behind that. Well, um, if we observe the active galactic nuclei again by, uh, by the spectroscopic technique, we can see that there are a lot of uh, kind of AGM. We can see the previous AGM that I showed you. This is like a, a quasar spectrum. There is other kind of AGMs that are super one. Uh, there are other ones that 
they don't show broad lines on these narrow lines, so it means that we are observing um, the outer part of the of the nucleus. We are observing directly into the nucleus, so it's equal to. There are other galaxies uh, where we can observe also the component of the host galaxy, this black body, and this is the normal galaxy. So you see, you can compare here how the spectrum of a normal galaxy looks like compared with the rest of the AG, of the of the family of the AGNs. So um, we propose that if we uh, combine and we take different values of this parameter and we include the orientation, we can get all the family zoo uh, that we are observing here. So for example, by one AGM are observing directly, we are observing the center. We can see the clouds that are close to the nuclear uh, region and also the clouds that are in the ground like region. Like the ship, so so yes, 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 yes. Type two, for example, we've been observing only in this direction, we can observe only the narrow line, so that's why we are observing nothing uh, from the center. Um, well, in this talk, I am uh, in this talk, I will focus in Taiwan Aegean. I have a silly question for you. Yeah. So, so far, I'm really following the very really good job we're refreshing all this. But I was always wondering for the type one type two. So we assume that we've seen phase on accretion disk, and you don't consider this in any connection with the host galaxy. But you could be also looking through the directly to the disk of the galaxy that would also extra obscure, or the AGN is too bright, so you don't need to consider yes, the concentration by the host galaxy. Usually, in type one, the contribution of the light of the AGN is, uh, or the active galaxy complex, is larger than the host galaxy. But there are some galaxies type one that you can subtract. You can also see a kind of a small contribution of the host galaxy, but you can uh, model the host galaxy and remove it and then see the galaxy. So do you need to find all this? You show it simplified, but of course it really also works for more complicated. Yes, yes. But well, it's happened, for example, for sources not really high range. So, for example, in really high range things, we are observing only the contribution of okay. the of the AGN. Of the active galaxy. Yeah, so in this talk, I will focus only on Taiwan AGN. Taiwan AGN means that the main continuum source is uh, generated by the pressure disks, and we are observing broad and narrow line regions. So, this is the typical spectrum that I will try to identify in our talk. Uh, well, but when we start to analyze the different emission lines that are in this spectra, we can organize these emission lines in different ways. So we can see that there are low emission lines. They show ionization potential less than 20. So here basically are the hydrogen lines and also the magnesium two lines. There are other lines that show an intermediate ionization, like the one that are in the red boxes. Another one that really show high ionization potential larger than 40. That there are the heavy elements like an four micro and so on. But there are there are other kind of lines like oxygen through the forbidden lines. This forbidden lines is an indication that the density in the clouds where these uh, emission lines are emitted is really low compared with this one. So this one, the other lines they have a density around 10 to 9, and this one really the density is comparable. So uh, the emission lines also are indicating how is the structure of the BLR, that the density is not the same, the density is going to be different, also the ionization potential, depending on uh, where is the emission line produced, will be the emission line that we are observing. And yeah, so we can get a lot of information from this. This spectrum, however, is a composite spectrum of Taiwan. So it's basically, we. Took, uh, we take all the spectra that we find by one and we make like a medium spectrum. But um, if we observe individual active galactic nuclear spectrum, we can see that the features uh, change between them. So, for example, in this case, uh, we have uh, the H beta profile, this is the optical. Uh, um, this is an hydrogen line, and we see that the profile is quite broad compared to this profile. The uh, forbidden emission line oxygen three here are quite strong, and here are really no, there are no any contribution. And also here there is the iron two, and the iron two here looks like a, like a, almost like a mountain. And here uh, we can see that the different contribution of these elements are really narrow. So apparently 
the width of the M2 and the H beta are related. Here are broad and here are narrow. So uh, if we take uh, these properties, the width of the emission line and also the intensity of the RP and other properties of the AGM, we can get correlation between them. And uh, using the principal component analysis technique uh, at the beginning of the analysis, um, Morrison and Green make this analysis and they found that there is a clear correlation, it's not linear, uh, between the width of the emission line and this, uh, the idle, the intensity of the idle tree. So, uh, AGMs are located in this part of the region, there are some kind of outlier, but it's not like they are in the fuel map, they are located in this part. If we use a large sample like the, like the slow and digital sky survey with a lot of galaxies, we see again the, the same figure. This is like a triangle. In this part of the diagram, there are no objects, and the question is why. And, and now, uh, it's what the physical meaning of this parameter. So the width of the emission lines are the are uh, giving us information about the velocity speed of the clouds. And this RFP parameter is talking about the ionization state of the real atmosphere. But uh, from observational results, we have found that this parameter, RFP, or the intensity of the iron, is correlated with the Newton project. So one idea is that if we uh, see or we analyze how is this uh, element, we can get information about the Newton radio without making any kind of estimation or something like that. But other properties are apparently well organized in this sequence. One is the black hole mass. The objects that are in the zone show lower uh, black hole mass compared with the ones that are here. Also, density of the clouds are higher here compared with here, and there is an effect of orientation also in this sequence. Well, uh, taking this sequence that is in the optical range, we can uh, divide the different AGMs in subpopulations. So we can name the objects here in this horizontal line, like population A, and in this part, population B. And if we take the AGMs in these different beams, the spectra of them, we can find that, well, the spectral change really just, uh, it has a different a big difference between the spectrum that are here and the spectrum that are here. These are the average spectrum. Yes, this is an average spectrum. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, but uh, the, the average spectrum is because that all of them are more or less similar. Yeah. Uh, so here there is a finally an evolution of the spectral properties. If we use other kind of emission lines, for example, if we move to the UV, this is the emission line that I was showing you before, and now we are moving to the UV region. With my, and we use magnesium 2 and Fe2, we found a similar diagram. So this is the contribution of the iron, both in the UV. Now we are in the UV region. And we are using the magnesium 2 has the velocity field mapper. And again, we can see here we have that relation. So apparently this relation is in the full um, uh, spectrum, in the full spectra. Uh, but why would we use other kind of UV emission lines? Well, uh, some time ago, some astronomers found that there is also an evolution in the properties of the UV. So, for example, this is the carbon, this is the magnesium 2, the previous line, and now we are in the UV. Uh, region. Here we have the carbon 4, that is the most important line, and carbon 3. If we observe different kind of AGMs, we will see also an evolution in the profiles. The, the objects that are in the top show more like symmetric profiles compared with the objects that are here. Here, <coughs> the, base, uh, the profile is completely asymmetric and it has a blue asymmetry, so it's an indication that these sources are affected by outflows. And also, this feature is there is an apparent change. Blue asymmetry. blue asymmetry is like this is like the blue part of the wavelength and the red part. So this is skewed towards the red. Yeah, it is skewed. Yes. Yes, this is Cuban. Yeah, this is the core. I cannot see all the, the text on it. So. Ah, yeah, no, no, but this, this is Cuban. Yeah, it's the, the correct uh, word. Yeah, so uh, we can see like this is kind of asymmetric of Cuban profiles and it's an indication of an outflow. So, uh, 
Taking on that, we can see that if there is an outflow, so for sure the emission radio is high and the radiation forces are larger than like the gravitational radiation. So there are some physics behind the behavior of the spectral uh, uh, properties. So now the idea is try to identify another uh, main sequence uh, within these lines. However, we can only use the line one alpha and carbon four because they are strongly affected by radiation forces. Uh, magnesium two is limited by ground-based telescopes, so it means that we can uh, we can observe high redshift um, from the air because we lost this information. So the option is to use this uh, blend, and this blend is uh, includes different emission lines. It includes aluminium, silicon, carbon, and also the iron. So. Um, but the main challenge is to identify one feature that can be like the ideal estimator, another one that can be like the association state indicator. And uh, in this case, the video estimator is going to be the aluminium, and the other one will be the ethylene. What may I ask, excuse me? Yeah. You know, not all of these people are. Yeah. yeah. And we, we need ions which reveal the velocity field. Mm -hmm. So, what is the source of radiation? Not ions, right? You need ions only to detect. We need the, the, the source of radiation is accretion disk. So yeah. the photons that are produced right. in the accretion disk travel need? to the clouds, and then the cloud is photoionized and reprocessed as an emission line. And we can observe all these kind of uh, emission lines. It's yeah. velocity field. Yeah, because the clouds are moving. They are moving like this. So it's, it is gas. You yeah, have gas so around. You need ions to detect the velocity. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yes. If you not. Dr. Golden. Sorry? Yes. Dr. Yes. 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 It's like gross dispersion more than yes. gross dispersion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this dispersion. Yes. And it's, it's, it's a case. Well, so um, uh, yeah, so the I, the iron three will be the one that will be an indication of the ionization state. And previously, uh, we found that there is a relation between between the iron in the UV and also the iron in the in the different ionization state of the iron are correlated, and they in turn are correlated with the emitter radio. So it is also important because we only try to analyze this feature, we can have an idea what is happening with the emitter radio, or it, it, and this is for us really important. So now for this analysis, I am using a food sample from the Nova Digital Sky Survey. I am using the reverberation mapping sample. Some of these subjects are already monitoring and the black hole mass is determined directly. So uh, this is a good, um, uh, uh, this is a good sample to compare, for example, different measures of the black hole mass. So the sample that I'm using uh, has the 500 uh, sources. This is the luminosity range, and this is the redshift range. So you see, we have the uh, redshift uh, some sources at redshift three and also redshift four. So for cosmological uh, proofs, this is really important. And what we are or how we are going to do this? Well, uh, we have now a Monte Carlo Markov chain routine that is based on Fortran. We decide to use this because it's faster. Uh, and are also combined with Python for this to make the plots and so on. And we are going to fit basically this small range. And these are our results. So you can see we have a really big, uh, this is the same spectral range. And we have a family of, of emission line profiles. So here, for example, we have uh, the carbon tree, the most important, and compared with other objects, for example, here we can see the aluminum, and here we can see nothing. And here the aluminum is also quite strong compared with the other emission lines that that uh, and this situation, this we can say that these profiles are completely opposite. So uh, now uh, the idea is to take all these measurements and see what is happening between them. 
So if we combine the width of the aluminum tree and the intensity of the F3, again, we find this kind of sequence. This is the sequence in the optical and this is the sequence in the UV. And this sequence is important because it includes really high redshift sources that in the optical and in the case of magnesium UV, it's not possible. So there are some sources that some sources here, and this is also quite relevant because this is an indication that AGMs are not rigid and high rigid behave in the same way. Well, so if we take our spectrum, we can make the same that we did in the optical. So we expect some kind of profiles with uh, really strong features here compared with the feature, uh, features here. But I'm still working on that thing to make it like more elegant. Well, other interesting thing is that the F3, it means the, uh, the, the parameter that is here, is correlated with the input ratio. So it's again a strong F3 features will be high affecting AGM. So it's really quite important in the AGM physics. Well, so why this trend is important more that we can see that there is a evolution in the uh, features kind of trends with their properties. And well, so it reminds us, oh, I did something stupid thing again. Uh, yeah, so it reminds us to the Hirschberg Rosen diagram for stars. So they, uh, with the star, the situation is very, uh, start like the same. The people start to take different spectrum and they said that also there is an evolution in the spectral features. So for example, in this case, there are a lot of uh, hydrogen contribution compared with these that we, we have here, heavy element. Uh, and then with the time, the people found that this diagram that correlates the luminosity, the spectral type and the color uh, is an evolution of how the stars evolve in this sequence. So the stars that are born in um, hydrogen are in this sequence and the rest are other kind of stars. So uh, as an example, I would like to show you the, how the uh, songs evolve uh, in this sequence. So now the, the star is moving to the main sequence. This is the main sequence. It's where it's burning hydrogen. Then the hydrogen ends and then move to a, a red giant star and moves to the white dark stars and then move into the last stage of the sun. Yeah, so uh, behind this diagram that correlates the luminosity and the temperature, there is a Behind this, there is a physics and also there is an evolution. And all the correlations that we are finding in the spectral features of the ADMs are apparently the same. But uh, we have more components than in the case of the stars. We have a, a also a fact that is the inclination angle. Also, we see that the mechanism is relevant and probably there are other elements that we don't know. But all these sequences suggest that. So uh, there are too many things for to try to answer. Uh, there is not still a theory what is happening here. So in the case of the stars, in this diagram, we can theoretically found how the radio change with the luminosity. And the AGM case, we still don't have a theory. There are some kind of uh, atoms. Our colleague Ryan, that was a student, student and he was trying to make some kind of theoretical work with the relaxation clouds, but uh, it's really not, we are not doing the last stage to say that, oh, we can have really this with the theory. So we are quite, quite still in the start of this one. So there are a lot of questions and there are there is a lot of upcoming uh, uh, answers. So I'm not going to go deeply on that, but now I could only would like to stress that I am using a bigger sample. I am part of the Solar Digital Space Survey Fund. So I will uh, make the same analysis with a big sample just to confirm that the, that the trend is already there and check if we can go deeply. So this is my last slide. So when well, we can organize uh, the AGM properties in this kind of sequence, there is this uh, sequence is apparently the broadband spectrum and the Eddington ratio seems to be different in this sequence, but there are other, other elements that we still have to consider. So, thank you. Thank you very much for the talk and questions.
Yeah. I, I would have two nice questions related to the question of so because I didn't get what's the physical process of the why I answer and why I do not it's not enough to observe the emission of the neutral neutral energy. Because at the end of the day, I would like to know what is the speed of the Doppler shift. Mm -hmm. So why I also this because in the uh, in the spectrum you can find the ionizing the ions in that stage. So, uh, for example, if you, um, this is your pressure of this, and you have your set of clouds. So here, depending, if you are closer to the continuum source, the energy will be stronger. So the ions will be like, what I like, uh, carbon-4, nitrogen-5. Everything I have Yes, everything is what I have If you move too far away, the energy will decrease, and then, for example, other emission lines can survive, like the, the hydrogens, or like really very low uh, emission lines, like the iron 2, for example, that the ionization potential is somewhere like in the 5, also can survive. So, depending on your, uh, the distance of your, where is your cloud or the gas, will be the ions that are produced. So, you, you, you measure the distance by the density of ions. Yes, it, yeah, density is also important there. Yeah. yeah, but predominantly by the, by the line of it, because mm -hmm. it's more or less Keplerian motion, right? Circular motion, which is the Doppler now the link says that. Yeah, but no, no. Doppler gives you only the velocity, but how do you measure it? You need also the density. To, to find the distance from the source, let's say, from the center. No, you don't need the density. Eventually, you can work out the density, no, okay. the distance from the density, but that's, that's much more difficult. Mm -hmm. Normally, if you have the, the satellite like the moon, whatever, you don't need the, the, the mass of the moon. This is the, this particle motion, right? You have the central body. This is the Keplerian problem, right? You, if you know the mass of the central body, then the distance comes from the period, mm. right? We don't have a period, but we have velocity. That's the same information. And of course, since there is a range of distances, this is ionization states changes with the distance theory, then it's different lines you see different width. Mm -hmm. Of course, that also corresponds to the same central mass, but that's another <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Organize everything, you know, and of course I understand it's future steps in a long uh, journey to maybe make AGNs also some sort of standardized, uh, not candles, but sort of standardized uh, 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 vehicles, right? And you can see AGNs also from far away, like quasars. So it'll be very interesting. I was wondering how the policy is important in your estimate, because we know there's a chemical evolution of the galaxies, obviously other parts of the written uh, elements, by the way, just for our own colleagues in astronomy, metal serving that is beyond here in can, can escape us. But for us, everything, and this is that we know all, uh, all heavier elements of dependence with the metallicity. In principle, just yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe you would have a depletion of some metals yeah, and it would not be smaller. So I was Thank wondering. You. How uh, this is important for this and 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 the yeah. separate is not important at all. I am hoping if I could show you something. Well, uh, for to determine the mechanicity, we cannot do it directly or with our spectrum, we need something else. Yeah, yeah. So we need the propagandization uh, simulations to get each other So, Koshena, 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 Koshena,
Yeah, so uh, Marcella that was working with Oshera already make an analysis of the metallicity, for example, in this kind of superkeleton sources. And they found that the metallicity is really quite high in this kind of objects compared with the other ones. What we did, so uh, we, they performed photoionization simulations, we get information from the call, and then we have also the information from the uh, from the from the telescope, right. and then we compare both. And the models indicate that in the case of the energy sources, metallicity is higher compared with the lower sources. But um, it's supposed that there is a metal evolution. However, uh, these sources are around the GP. And but there are other kinds of analysis with sources like 0 0.1 in Rachi. There is like really a big difference in, in Rachi compared to in one. And the results are still the same. The density is quite high. So apparently in the broadband region, there is not an evolution intensity. And the question is why? Yeah, it's like seems like they somehow detached from the rest of the galaxy. Like yes. Yes. Um I I I was saying really so no metal points. Yeah, exactly. Yes, never ever, even if you go to the sheet seven. It's maybe my possible for control formation. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying also Twitter to find some plot, but I have no I sorry, I don't I don't I don't have it here. Okay. But also there are other kind of emission lines, for example, Marcus 2 ion. Uh, that this, uh, these properties are measured in lower chip and lower chip uh, six or seven, and uh, they, the idea is that the, the radio of between them, because both are produced at different scales, they will have a difference, and there is not any difference. So apparently, the broadband region is not evolving. Not here, not in lower chip seven. That's very surprising. Yeah. Would you well, say? No, no, we're not surprising mm -hmm. because now when you look at the newest uh, uh, cosmological flaws of the uh, uh, quasar density as a function of redshift and starburst intensity mm -hmm. as a function of redshift, you see that starburst have not emit areas. So if you first have a star formation mm -hmm. in the nucleus. Very close, not in the whole galaxy, but inside the nucleus, and then the remnants fall into a black hole, and then you see the quasar. Well, so you can have low metal as far as the galaxy, and you can continue the discussion yeah. during the There is a question in the bar. There is a question in the bar. It's, it's more of a comment than a question. It's what goes with what um, uh, is talking about is that I, I believe that probably the, the, the answer to this. Um, let's say not this problem, but this behavior of not having the metal core uh, re um, regions near uh, BGN, so near this uh, emission line region. I believe it's probably because the galaxy is formed first in these central regions of the galaxy, exactly where the black holes are. And that's where you have the fastest emission of elements. Therefore, I wouldn't expect the regions to be metal core anyway. It, it makes sense to me uh, if you look at it in the sense of galaxy emission mm -hmm. and where metals are formed uh, originally in uh, all galaxies. Yeah, let's have a chat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I want to ask Zoom participants. Um, there are some participants on Zoom. Are there any questions? Not, not now. Uh, or any other questions or comments? If not, I have a question actually about your last uh, conclusion, like this analogy between Hedge bloom cluster diagram for stars and the quasar. Yeah, I mean the the, the 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 next one. Yeah, this one is for stars and uh, how close this analogy is in reality. Uh, in case of uh, HGN, what you see here is some indicators. Yeah, uh, are these equivalent to luminosity and temperature mm -hmm. of the accretion disk? Or rather, the black hole properties, the mass of black holes. Well, what is this analogy? In fact, well, so the analogy is that first we are here. The spectral, oh, the spectral features change 
as the temperature, right? Yes. So the yes. spreads are tight. Yes. There are like different spectral features. In the ADN, we are observing the same. Mm -hmm. And also, it depends on luminosity, it's also involved here, because low luminosity sources will be somewhere here compared with the other one. So mm -hmm. it's not like in the case of the stars that we can take a few parameters and create the evolution diagram. In the case of the year, we have more things. And uh, here I'm talking about the UV and optical properties. And here we have still to include what's happening in the other broadbands, what is happening in the radio. So the ana statistical analysis says that the radio loud are located here, and radio quiet are located here. But this is another dimension. Yes, this is another dimension. So it's like you can know in um, to try to get something complete. Like yeah, try as the value, the x axis and the surface temperature of the yeah. sky. Oh, yes, it is a single value. Yes. Yes. So the in surface. the case of the Indian, it's not so easy like that. Easy. But at least this diagram is giving any kind of trends. Mm -hmm. So from these trends, I guess that we can move to something else. But uh, it, it, this everything has been, uh, or the observation data are providing the results. We still have to work on the theoretical things that this is the main challenge, but, but we are working on that. Okay, very inspiring. <laughs>